I know you clicked on this video because I said you have been fooled all your life. What does a spin of this wheel has to do with that? So make sure to watch the video till the end to fully understand this. Around the 1800s, famous mathematician Charles Babbage attended a dinner party with his very good friend, astronomer Herschel. Now, these two names may sound familiar because Babbage is often credited as the father of modern computing, whilst Herschel is credited as the man who discovered the planet Uranus. During this dinner party, Herschel asked Babbage a question, which, unknown to him, was going to set the preamble for one of the greatest inventions mankind has ever seen. Herschel brought out a coin and asked Babbage, how can you manage to see two sides of this coin at the same time? Babbage's answer, just bring out a mirror and see the reflection of the coin in the mirror. Hooray, genius, right? Now, Herschel had a different idea. The idea was, span the coin, as the coin keeps spinning, the two sides of the coin seem to blend together seamlessly. This story got around so much that it got to an Irish doctor by name William Harry Fitton. Fitton had an idea with this concept to develop a toy which became known as the thermostrobe. How does a thermostrobe work? Fitton took one image, kept it on one side of a disc, took another image, kept it on the other side, hoist it on a rope like this, and you spin it, the images seem to blend up together. Let me specifically show you how this works. This flip book contains cubes across all the pages and as I keep flipping through these pages, the boxes seem to be moving from one page to the other. Meanwhile, these are just single pages with separate drawn boxes. Now, why does this work? This is all because of context. Because your brain saw a box here and saw another box in this particular page, your brain was like, oh, since I saw a box initially here, then it must be the same box that has moved to the next page. Hence, it invents a motion which never existed. This simply means your brain just told you a lie. The box never moved, but it just filled in the gap. Let me prove this to you using fire. This effect you're about to see is not because of my camera shutter, but it is real life and you can try it at home and you get the same results. Now, let's spin the fire. Even though the fire is just at one spot, because of the speed at which we are spinning it, it seems to leave trails behind. And if we keep spinning this harder, at one point, all the trails are going to connect together, forming a complete circle. Meanwhile, the fire is just one spot moving step by step. Your brain is simply just filling in the gaps. Again, your brain is simply telling you lies. It's inventing things that do not exist. This idea is, however, not new, as ancient people also had an idea about this. In ancient Greece, some philosophers realized that if you look at the sun for so long and you look away, the sun seems to still stay in your eye at least a fraction of a second when you look away. You can do this experiment, even just look at the light bulb and look away. And once you look away, you will still see trails of that light bulb or that harsh light source just a fraction of a second before it completely disappears. This means that your brain is constantly living at least a fraction of a second in the past. It's constantly looking back at what happened or the previous frame and judging what the next frame is or what is going to happen. Neurologist David Eagleman calls this post-diction. It is the clear antithesis of prediction. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I'm beginning to doubt my eyes. I'm beginning to doubt what reality actually means. Wow. It is this particular weak point of our brain that the technology of cinema thrives on. The illusion is not about what you see, it's rather about what you don't see. This whole idea about your eye wanting to lock on an object and keep track of it is actually called object permanence. And in the case of the cube that we use for this experiment, it is because your eye wants to naturally keep track of the box. And that is why once it saw it, it kept telling you lies. It kept inventing in-between frames that never truly existed to fool you into thinking that you just saw motion. Meanwhile, those are just individual streams of pictures. To further understand this, let's look at how a film projector works. What you see here is a film projector, and this is the film strobe. Each box you see there contains a single picture, and it is these pictures that are going to be played in rapid succession to create the illusion of motion. What you see here is a bulb which shines through to throw the image onto what you see in front, which is a lens which redirects the lights and focuses it at a spot where you are able to see the images. And what you see behind here is actually kept at the back of the bulb to block the lights from spilling off. But there is a catch here. 
Now, if it's all about just moving these images continuously, this is the kind of effect you are going to get. We are constantly going to have blur because the images are going to keep moving. Now, engineers counter this problem by going back to the idea of prediction and object permanence. Now, because your brain has already seen the first image, the projector pauses, goes blank, and within that process, the mechanism moves the next image onto place and you see the next image. This simply means that when you go to the movie theater, you simply spend more than half of your time staring at a blank screen. I don't know about you, but I feel like chasing movie producers and taking my money because I feel like I've just been cheated. Let me chase one of the movie producers. <laughs> Well, that was just a joke, but you kind of get the point. So it simply means that movies work because of what you don't see and not because of what you see. Your brain is simply filling in the gaps. Now with the advancement of technology and we shooting and projecting in a digital age, now your modern screens do not go off once they are moving the next image onto the screen. They simply reduplicate the image several times and change it gradually using blur to cover up the empty spots. And this is how your mobile phone screen and this is how all your modern TV sets work. This simply means that this video you've been watching all this while is fake. You are just watching still pictures of me moving about and the frames are being interpolated for you to watch. But do you know what isn't fake? There are two things that aren't fake here. The subscribe button and the like button. Please make sure to click on the like button if you are enjoying this video by this far so that other people will discover this video as well on YouTube. And if you are just discovering this channel for the very first time, this is Africa Maze channel. Over here, I talk about cinematography, photography, editing, and all its related branches right here from Africa. And if all this sounds interesting, then I would do much appreciate it if you do click on the subscribe button, make sure to click on the post notification bell, and click on all so that you are notified anytime I drop awesome content like this right here on the Africa Maze channel. That takes me to the beginning of this video when I tried spinning the wheel. When I'm behind the wheel, you can tell that these are individual spokes which are preventing you from seeing my face directly. But when I spin this, because of the high speed at which is moving, you are not able to tell that these are spokes and you are able to see my face even though this thing is actually spinning. I will catch you in this particular video where I go to experiment to see how far my modern DJI drone can travel. Until next time, as always, keep practicing filmmaking. Peace out.